welcome back Patreon listeners. Thank you for joining us and I think this will be our second ever quick fire interview uh, random questions. We're still working out the title of the piece truthfully and um, we, 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 we've got Eric Wahlberg back on. Uh, amazing, we had an amazing interview with Eric a uh, good, good few months ago now. A uh, real Sega legend, electronic arts legend. So Eric, really appreciate you being back today. Thank you for your time. Oh, my pleasure brother. Um, we might actually tease a few people actually before we start this. I think it's it's definitely in the planning stage right now. Hopefully it's going to happen, but we hopefully going to get a bit of a uh, round table discussion, aren't we, with um, yourself and some other people working on Knockout Kings? Do a whole episode dedicated to that amazing game. Uh, oh, get still in the planning stage. Nothing's confirmed yet, but that's what that's what we're trying to get done in the background. So that'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah, and I would love for you guys to meet some of the people that worked on it as well. Obviously, it's a huge team, um, so yeah. we'll just kind of figure out who wants to talk and how to work it out. But, um, you know, like I said in my last interview was that the, pro the producers and the designers get all the glory, but, you know, you have the artists and the engineers and so many people that really made the game, right? So that would be cool. It would be really cool. Uh, it's a proper decent boxing game as well. I, I was a massive fan. I know my friend James, who's also on the pod, will be part of that discussion because I know he's got lots of questions. Anyway, let's do this crazy quick fire questions. Um, actually, interestingly, you, <laughs> you, you actually helped uh, for a few suggestions, didn't you, for this particular, because I put it out there on the on the Facebook wall. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know, you might be asked questions you already put forward, for example. I answer my own questions. <laughs> I think someone actually asked who would win in the fight, you or Mike Latham, do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, well, so I guess I'll respond like I did in the, the comments on your site, right, which was that um, I would defer to Odin. He is the uh, the king of Segasgard, right? If you remember, Back in the day, he was Odin. I was Thor. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no. Um, but uh, I'll say this, right? From a, a, a mental toughness standpoint, I wouldn't mess with Mike. I mean, that guy is focused. That guy, when he was at Sega, he was a beast, just constantly working, constantly doing stuff. And uh, yeah, so um, physically, I probably know a few more moves than him. But uh, yeah. but mentally, he's a tough guy. And a cool guy, of course. It would be a, a good fight, but I would want to see two two <laughs> friends and two massive supporters of the podcast fight, really, because we you know we all get maybe, along. But <laughs> maybe we could play Eternal Champions together. That would be the way to do it. That would be the way to could solve you Imagine it. like a proper. Oh, well, that would be people. Would, there'd be loads of people watching that. Um, let's do the first question then, and whisper these really quickly. So, Eric Wahlberg, this is our quick fire question. So, tea or coffee? What what do you prefer? Coffee always. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I agree. Uh, Pepsi or Coca Cola? Coke. Oh, really? Um, is yeah. it is it true that in the US there is a huge divide between whether you're a Pepsi man or a Coca Cola man? Is that is that a bit of a? Well, I mean, maybe thirty years ago, there's things bigger, bigger things that divide us nowadays. But um, sadly, yeah. <laughs> but know. you know, I think I think in general, most people like one or the other. But a lot of restaurants over here, they have specific deals with. Coke or Pepsi, and so you just you'll drink Pepsi if they have Pepsi. Uh, um, no. Personally, it's a little sweet for me, mm. uh, but I mean, I don't drink a lot of soda anymore. Um, but I do like Coke more. Ah, fair enough, fair enough. I no point me asking this question. I think I think, I think the next two questions are almost redundant. But I'm going to do it anyway. Mario or Sonic? Are you going to break the internet if you, <laughs> you say one or well, the other? <laughs> so I'll I'll elaborate on why it's Sonic, right? Because yeah. obviously it's Sonic as a Sega guy. Um, I'm I'll probably get some heat for this, but Growing up, I wasn't a big fan of the Nintendo kind of look and feel. I like things that were a little bit more edgy, a little bit more, and sometimes real or whatever, if you could be in the 90s and, you know, 16-bit. Um, so they're a little too cute for me, although I will say those games are amazing. They're masterfully made, I mean, no doubt. But uh, I love the edginess and the coolness of Sonic and uh, things like we did with Eternal. It's so edgy and rated mature, right? Um, yeah, so yeah. yeah, but definitely Sonic. Now, for, I think I think I asked Michael this, but I think I asked you this. Eric, probably you have already. But I, I asked if you could choose any Nintendo game that was released on the Mega Drive or Genesis instead. Which game would you choose? Which would you be like, wow, this would help really the console sell well? Any particular, apart from maybe Mario, let's say. So you're saying a Nintendo game to be released on a Sega system? Yeah. So maybe you could choose. I don't know, Zelda, the Link to the right, Past. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, wow. Um, you know, that's a really good question because we had some pretty cool RPGs on on the Sega Master System, right? For sure, the Genesis. 
Um, so, I mean, Zelda would definitely be up there. Um, you know, I'm going to have to say probably something like a, a Mario World or mm -hmm. uh, or a Mario Kart or just some of the classic um, Mario games. I think yeah, yeah. any of those, because they're a different style, right? Like Sonic yeah. is just flying all over the place. And um, yeah, I mean, again, you know, I'm not a huge Nintendo fan, so yeah, uh, yeah. my my knowledge is, is probably moderate compared to most people. Fair dues. I was going to ask Sega and Nintendo, but again, <laughs> redundant yeah. question. Really. <laughs> How about X yeah, Sega. How about Xbox or PlayStation? That's Play PlayStation. Hundred percent. Sure. Yeah. So I I have enjoyed how, and I've played both, right? I mean, I've had a lot of lot of a lot of both systems over the years. I like the consistency of the controls, mm -hmm. right? So every year they're pretty much the same controller, whereas. Uh, it, it's been sh it shifted a few times over the years with X uh, Xbox, not quite the same. And also, even I don't really like the Xbox controller as much. I kind of I got to get you know kind of get myself acclimated to the size and the way it work your hands. Um, and also, even the cons consistency of how they um, how the interface is right to get into the games and, and all the the back end menus and stuff. Um, yeah, it's just I'm a definitely a PlayStation guy and a lot of the games as well, right? A lot of the the great PlayStation classics, uh, Uncharted, and all those yeah. games. Not fair enough. No, good answer. How about the Amiga or Atari ST? Have you ever had any experience with either of those two computers? Well, so I played Commodore a lot. Oh, and nice. So yeah. Obviously, that's you know the the baby brother of the Amiga, or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, I I love the Commodore. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't a techie guy, so I didn't get much farther than buying the software for it and playing the games on it. Yeah. Um, but uh, I can tell you a quick funny story, which yeah. was when I would play um, the Gold Box Dungeons and Dragons games that came out in the '80s. They were on Commodore, and uh, it was just magical. I would spend all day playing it. I would go to work. I would come back and spend all night playing it, and just constantly until I finished it. And and there's a few of those. And this is why I'm telling you the story, which is that on the third or fourth episode, you could actually carry the characters over. These these wow. came over a period of a few years, right? which is pretty rare for games back then. You'd actually save the game, save your character, right? But what I'm getting at is the Commodore, like the Sega CD at the end, was dying, and they didn't make a final version of the game on the Commodore. They did on the, on the Amiga, they did on the PC. Nice. And so I, I never played it until probably like five years ago, I, I got the game for PC, right? Uh, so that was heartbreaking, but cool. But I love the Commodore, and there's some uh, some classic games in there. I mean, I, I would probably have to, it's five in the morning, right? I have to yeah. think back to some of them, but I, I have some good memories of playing Commodore games back in the day. Oh, nice. No, good. And you are a big Dungeons & Dragons fan, aren't you? Is that fair? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I even, I, I, I role play on a Twitch stream, uh, I dress up like a wood elf. I have green hair and tattoos cool. on my face and stuff. Yeah, so nice. I'm, I'm I'm all into D and D for sure. Oh, I like that. This is a, probably a bit of a tough question because I'm not going to add in Eternal Champions or any other fighting game you're involved in, sadly. But are you a Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat man? Street Fighter for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, but I'm also but I'm a Tekken guy, really. Yes. To be honest. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because Tekken felt the most like a real fight, right? Like the the movements, the timing of things. Um, I, I definitely enjoyed Tekken a little more than Street Fighter, but as I said in our interview, I played Street Fighter for days when I was younger. I loved that game. Um, I only got so good because the better guys were a lot better than me, but, um, <laughs> but I definitely enjoyed the game. Uh, well, actually, I agree. Tekken, the first three Tekkens, I, I loved them on the PlayStation. I was obsessed at one point. Um, oh, uh, slightly away from gaming now, do you think pineapples belong in a pizza? Yeah, you know, so I'm a pepperoni guy for the most part, but I've had plenty of uh, ham and pepperoni pizza, and I don't mind it. I I don't uh, I don't have a uh, political um, <laughs> opinion about it. You know, I think it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Have, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. No good. How about Arnie or Sly? Have you got a preference? Who's your favorite actor out of those two? Um, you know, it was Arnold back in the '80s, I think. Because, I mean, everything from his really cool roles from, like, you know, the Terminator and he's in the Predator and all those lines, classic lines, so many of them. Uh, but Arnold's got stain power. I'm not Arnold, sorry. Uh, I told you it's yeah. five in the morning. Yeah, uh, yeah. Stallone has got some stain power. I mean, he was even 
not too long ago in that Marvel movie, right, where he was in the, uh, the end credit scene. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, he's staying re relevant. So um, I'd probably say Stallone now, mm -hmm. but I, the one thing I miss is that they never actually did a movie together. Well, they right. did Expendables, to be fair, but that was uh, oh. yeah, it's very late on. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah. So yeah, talk. we should not do this at five in the morning. <laughs> yeah, um, sorry, sorry, Eric. More specifically, a movie that was like just the two of them is like their classic iconic characters, you know, like a yeah. Rambo meets a Commando kind of combo, yeah. that kind of thing, right? That would have been cool. Um, but yes, they were in a movie together. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. But I agree. During the eighties or nineties, it was crying out for a proper Arnie Sly kind of, uh, you know. Yeah. All actions, you know. Um, who would win in a fight between a lion and a gorilla, <laughs> in your opinion? I would have to say it would be the lion. Uh, I mean, gorillas are incredibly powerful, but they don't have claws and stuff. So yeah. I'm going to imagine that the lion would take the gorilla down and get at his neck, and it would be a mess. <laughs> it would be a mess. Yeah, I, something <laughs> we don't really need to see, I don't think. But yeah. <laughs> Good answer. Have you got a favorite film of all time? One film you just love and you could rewatch? Uh, yeah, there's a few. So the first VCR uh, movie I ever got was The Warriors. Oh, yes. yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm a big yeah. fan. Yeah. 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 And I was like 13, I think. And um, I had that movie memorized, right? Every moment of it. And uh, but, but aside from the ones I watched as a kid, which I did love and I still watched, uh, I like Dawn of the Dead 2004 remake um, okay. by, by uh, Zack Snyder. Um, I mean, a lot of the classic ones, uh, Terminator 2, yeah. um, you know, uh, but then there's also some kind of, and I, and I would have to dig back into my head as for what other ones, but some kind of more emotionally powerful ones. I certainly love the Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. um, like Infinity War is up there is like probably one of my all-time favorite movies. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. Which Avengers three, right? Yeah. Um, what what I loved in that movie was how they did what you didn't think they would ever do, which was they ended a movie by killing half the heroes and saying <laughs> end credits, and you're like, oh my god, right? Uh, by the way, I should have given a spoiler alert to any of your viewers yeah. who haven't watched that yet. Um, <laughs> but too late. It's been out for a while, to be fair. Um, if, okay, I love the Warriors by the way. It's a good video game as well, based on the game as well, isn't there? To be fair, it was yeah. fantastic. It was fantastic. Yeah. Would you? What gang would you have liked to? Which, who's the coolest gang in the, in that particular film? Do you think? Uh, well, I mean, the Furies, right? The, the, <laughs> yeah. The, with the, the mind makeup and um, even that fight scene was just classic as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, uh, but let's see. Uh, so let's go for a second one, right? Because that's an obvious one, I would say. Um, you know, in, in the video games, they expanded upon those quite a bit, right? They gave each one a whole little side quest, and you got to know what, more what they were like. But in the movie, um, I, I kind of like the Lizzies. Okay. Because, good, good. because they're almost, I'm going to say like ninjas, but they, were, they acted like they were, you know, just like some tough, cool chicks from the Bronx, but they were just badass, and they're pulling out knives and all kinds of stuff. Um now, the first time I saw that, I was like, holy crap, because I didn't think that was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Being 13 year old or whatever, right? That's yeah. a great. It's a, I want to watch the film now again, definitely. Um, do you have a favorite actor of all time? Is there an actor you re really respect? So many. Um, let's see. Uh, so I will grab just one because there's got to be too, too many. Um, I, you know, when you when we were texting this morning and, and I was like, oh, it's 430 in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Like, is my brain going to work well enough to answer these questions? Um, but uh, I, so I'll just throw one out there. I like, I like actors like a Christopher Walken type. I like ones that are eccentric and unique and different and have really good roles in a lot of movies like Deer Hunter and all these other movies he's been in. Um, and he's pretty good on SNL as well. He needs more cowbell, right? You've seen that one, right? I, Please tell ooh, me you have. I don't know. I have, actually. I have to. Oh, okay. So when we're done you have to actually i'll send you a link yeah fantastic one of the best snl skits of all time saturday night live snl mm -hmm. um uh, where he plays the producer for the blue oyster cult and there's a song that has cowbell in it fear the reaper and yes, it is a yes. classic and you've never seen this video no no i haven't seen the video 
definitely gold. need to watch it's it now. Gold. It's, so anybody, <laughs> anybody listening to this, if you have not, look it up. Christopher Walken, SNL, more cowbell. It's a, it's, a, it's been a meme for 20 something years. So gotta check it out. Do you have a favorite band or favorite music music artist? Yeah, um, you know, I as a kid, I loved Kiss. Yeah, uh, I, I would even pantomime all the songs with my friends. And there's four of us. We each had our favorite band member, and we would get these badminton rackets and pretend they were guitars, and we'd mouth the words. And uh, and even recently, right before the pandemic, yeah, I saw Kiss. So yeah, um, they're still going on, though. Yeah, yeah, um, but. Uh, you know, I like music in general. I don't think I really have like a hardcore favorite. Um, they change over the years, right? Sometimes you like them for a few years and they, they fade away. But um, no, I mean, I would say Kiss would be the one that stand out if whenever they're asked, you know, would be Kiss. Ah, fair enough. This is a relatively tough question, but have you got a favorite film based on a video game? Like maybe Mortal Kombat the film, for example, or Street yeah, Fighter? That was the first one that came to mind. Yeah, that was, that was Mortal Kombat. I loved the first one. I mean, the fight scenes were great. Uh, the cinematography, the, the 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 actors, most of them could actually do martial arts, which was nice. Yeah, like some, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it wouldn't be like the Street Fighter movie. It wouldn't be the uh, um, the Mario movie. Yeah. Like those were all just like. Bleh. Um, but I feel like there's another one not too long ago that was pretty good. Uh, I, not sure what it is, but I'm looking forward to Tom Holland in Uncharted, mm-hmm. right? So he, you know, you know, he's doing that, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. And I've never yeah. actually played Enchanted, but I've heard it's really good, so you might have to get on that actually. It's yeah. basically, I mean, uh, Uncharted is it's basically like you know Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of Uncharted, yeah. thing, more or less. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Lovely. Um, favorite TV show of all time? Uh, well, you know, because you have comedies and you have so. I was a huge uh, Walking Dead and Game of Thrones fan for a while. And then, of course, they both... Well, so Game of Thrones ended kind of badly. Yeah, at least did. the the, the, the did, did, did. And, um, and then Walking Dead is just like... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't even know you anymore. You know? <laughs> uh, so I don't really watch that anymore. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, geez. I mean, I, a lot of comedies as well. Like, kind of classic, like... The Odd Couple from the 1970s and uh, Taxi from the 80s. You know, like, I liked a lot of those growing up when you didn't have internet and access to a million shows, you kind of watched what was out. Um, but there's, yeah, there's definitely a lot out there. This one's come to mind at the moment. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. Do you actually have a favorite sports team? Could be any sport, but is there a team you really support big time? Yeah. So uh, you probably don't remember, but prior to one of our chats, uh, oh, yes. I'm a Chiefs fan. Yes, of course. Chiefs, right? yes, yes. Um, yeah. It was the 49ers because I live in the Bay Area. And then when Joe Montana was let go, I was young enough to be more loyal to a player than a team. And so I stuck with him and for, you know, the many, many years watching them get to the playoffs and fall off over and over again. Yeah. As you know, they finally won a Super Bowl, uh, not this year, but last year. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's, nice to, it's nice to be able to watch them. But I definitely... Uh, I'm a big Kansas City Chiefs fan. I don't care as much about most other team sports to that degree, right? Like, I mm-hmm. like it when the Warriors win, the basketball team and stuff. But, but yeah, I'd be the Chiefs. Oh, good stuff. Do you have a favorite food and a favorite drink, Eric? Yeah, so um, Mike Latham would know this one. You, could ask, <laughs> you should ask him when you do it. Say, what's Eric's favorite food? I'll and make a note of that. <laughs> tell you what I'm going to tell you, which is steak. Oh, really? Steak, because when we would when we were working on Eternal and other going out for different dinners that Sega was paying for, um, you know, it would always be steak, and and he he would even joke that you know one day there if you die they're going to cut you open and your body's going to be filled with steak. You know? <laughs> uh, now I don't eat as much now. Again, you know, I'm 53, so I got to eat a little better. Um, but I do love steak, and then for drinks, um, I mean, not that you'd have them together, but I like coffee as my drink of choice yeah, yeah. um drink a lot of water how boring is that and then um i like some red wine sometimes yeah how do you take your steak is it rare medium or well done <laughs> i i like it uh you know it used to be more medium rare but i like it a little more well done now a little bit more kind of crispy good um stuff. yeah good stuff good stuff um 
do you do you listen to any podcasts, uh, Eric? At all? You, is that an area you li- you're big fans of? Any podcasts or? Yeah, you know, so in all honesty, not really. And I I would attribute a lot of that to me being so used to watching medium. Yeah. Like uh, I can't tell you how many times I bought books or bought new new comic books and didn't read them, or at least only read part of it. And uh, so no, but um, I heard you have a good one. <laughs> it's doing it. well. We're back now. We're back from our little break. But yeah, it's done. It's done all right, actually. To be fair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Appreciate you know, it. As, an, as an aside, speaking of your your podcast, video podcast, and whatnot, uh, it's great that now we can all see people getting vaccines, things getting better, things getting more normal. We see that the light at, at, at the edge of the, at the end of the tunnel, uh, so that we can all get back, and you guys can just thrive. And I oh, I really hope you guys you know, triple, quadruple, whatever success you've had, because you guys deserve it. Oh, you're no, that's, and you've helped a lot. Uh, our listeners won't know this, and um, you've helped a bit in the background as well of getting other guests on the show and, and stuff like that. I don't want to name check certain people, but it has been really appreciative, and it's made a big difference as well, so thank you. I mean that. Um, this is a weird question. I don't know if I, I sometimes ask my guests, I don't think I asked you this before, but if you could live in any video game for one day, um that you've worked on which game would you choose and why so you, you're trying to survive i assume <laughs> i'm trying to survive well so uh because there's some games you know that like you know pitfall <laughs> where you die after 30 <laughs> seconds like yeah. i wouldn't want to be in that like yeah. do you mean like the environment like yeah so would... you're, you're plunked in the game and you basically have to live there for a day <laughs> yeah okay because the reason i say if, it, if it's lethal because i'm going to start trying to think of the the least lethal game i can you know like a guitar hero or something right but be- um <laughs> but uh you know ones that you know it would definitely have to be one of the adventure games or rpgs and uh um you know some of my favorites uh would be like dragon age origins um uh red dead redemption um you know being in these settings these deep settings with beautiful diverse landscapes and interesting characters and interesting times right so i'll just pull those two out of my pocket and say i think you know either of those would probably be pretty cool i go for it um again this is a tough question especially when it's like four in the morning but if you if you could bring back any gaming franchise like a franchise that's unfortunately kind of stopped being made or on a big break at least, which game would you like? To, which game would you like to bring back and deserves to make a bit of a comeback in your yeah. eyes? Yeah, um, you know, this is a chance for me actually to redeem a question you asked me in our interview, which oh. was about bringing the classic Sega IP to games now. Mm-hmm. And I kind of said, yeah, I see it could be cool. Um, I would, I would say a lot of those classic Sega games in virtual reality. Yes. Right. Yes. So that's something that, like, I hadn't really thought about it when you we were talking about it. It's kind of like, Bleh. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, so many of these games, especially I think because like Sonic's like a roller coaster, right? If you if you try to emulate that kind of game, yeah. and you're going through the loop de loops, and you're getting the rings, and you're, you know, maybe you can reach up and you grab it, right? Because the way oh, the cool. interface works, right? Uh, and being inside, you know, um, the virtual racing car. Uh, and how it'd be almost like Tron, right? It'd be really cool looking. So a lot of those in VR would be super cool to see them come back. Oh, that would be awesome. That's a good answer. Um, you're in trouble, Eric, and you can call a one video game character to help bail you out, whatever setting that could be. Who'd you call? Max Payne. Max, Max Payne. He would wreck people. I don't care if it's a demon or a tank or an army. Max Payne always kicks ass bullet time uh, i'm a huge max Payne fan um uh, are you fa- you've played all three of the games i've, I've played yes. one or two personally yep. i've played three i, three, I think they yeah. also really good i mean three uh it's different but so well done and just badass i mean uh, we talked about this i think before i don't know if it was on one of our uh the interview we did or off off camera but um that first one so much emotional um yeah, yeah, yeah. In, you know involvement in that one like the whole game the first one i felt like i was him just get revenge kicking ass like i was really motivated uh but three is good definitely check it out i will check it out i i i'll yeah I could talk about max Payne all day to be fair what are your high score initials when you do well in an arcade game or whatever 
I think I think like so many teenagers, probably not that uh, unique as God. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, God. yeah. It was God. When I would play, like I told you before, I play that game Kangaroo, the arcade game at 7 Eleven. Yes. Or anywhere I'd play it, I'd it was God, 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 God. <laughs> And you can say that was always me. That was me, me. Yeah, exactly. This is the guy who didn't even have a girlfriend, and um, so somehow I'm God. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to own it, uh, Eric. Um, I, again, if I've asked you this before, I do apologise, but we'll finish off by just saying your top three video games of all time that you still play or just look back and think these are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure I'm going to leave some out, but I'll just c come three of the best ones that I remember is like, I finished it and I loved it, whatever. Um, so I mentioned earlier, Dragon Age Origins, I really did enjoy that one. Um, I am going to go back to a DD and d game. And there's a few good ones like Baldur's Gate and whatnot, which were super, super good. Love Baldur's uh, Gate. Yeah, but and I'm sure you haven't played this other one, which I mentioned earlier, the Gold Box d d games that came out in the like 87, 88. I haven't. No. Yeah, so there was Pool of Radiance. That was the first very much authentic D, D game like all the rules were in there and it's long and it's like a module it's like a lot of fun so that one stuck with me because it was like magical to me um and then just to pull you know something more recent um also like xcom 2 right yes um, yes yeah uh, this the strategy mixed with a story mixed with having your own character you know investment and stuff um and always playing in uh I forget what with Iron Man mode or whatever the, they call it. That that was both awesome and a mistake <laughs> because <laughs> if you do poorly, you're screwed. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so th those are three. But you know, like uh, I mentioned earlier, like Red Dead Redemption Two. I love that one. Um, there's you know Mass Effect. I, I like a lot of adventure RPG kind of games oh, nice. or yeah. strategy games. Well, Eric, it's been really lovely chatting again, and um, I'm, we're, I'm sure we get you back on the show with different bits and bobs in the future, especially with that, you know, hopefully upcoming uh, Knockout Kings roundtable discussion. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yeah. yeah, this was for our Patreon listeners, so thank you so much for obviously being a Patreon listening today. We appreciate your support, and Eric, you're a real gentleman, and uh, thank you again for all the help in the background as well. I do appreciate it. My pleasure, my brother. I will see you soon. Thank you very much.